Porky. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. I'm joined today by young Chris from St. Helens. <clears throat> How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, mate, spot on yourself. I'm all right. Big boxing fan here, Chris. Yeah, um, I've been God since the 80s, you know what I mean? I'm in my mid-40s now. So, uh, yeah. I remember Paul Hodgkinson then. Yeah, they do, uh, from Kirby. Right. Um, from about 15 minutes down the road from where I am, yeah. And when you were yeah. a kid, you might have remembered John Conti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. If I'm not mistaken, I think my mum used to date him years ago. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> John Conti, I bet, I bet your mum could tell some stories. He would have raped lad in, wasn't he? Oh, well, yeah, uh, I believe so, like, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, have you been following boxing lately, Chris? Yeah, they have, mate, yeah. Um, right, it's pretty much the only sport to do follow these days, Porky. You know what I mean? I'd be, uh, days of following football are long gone. Yeah. Uh, have you got any topics you want to talk, any specifics you want to have a chat about? Um, right, I've literally got a few questions for you here, Porky, so I'll jump right in. Um First question is going to be about Martin Murray versus Billy Joe Saunders. Now, I know that everyone's slating Billy Joe Saunders for taking this fight, but being from St. Helens, I'm a big Martin Murray fan. Mm. And basically, I just want to hear your opinion and give a bit of feedback myself for what I think about it. So, uh, Well, first of all, when I worked with Dennis Hobson, Martin Murray, were, they, they offered the fight for Liam Cameron. Uh, Martin's team, it were, I think Mick Hennessy offered it, and it was going on Channel 5. And Liam had just had a fight, and it would have been he would have been fighting two and a half, three weeks later, and he knocked it back, Liam, and that was for seventeen yeah. grand. And Dennis were astounded, astounded because we felt at the time that Martin Martin Murray were on the slide, and Liam were <clears throat> Commonwealth champion at the time, but Martin were on the slide then, and that were. A, that were a couple of weeks after Liam's last fight. So he's been out at ring Liam two, and a, two years, seven months. So I personally, if, if, if that were two years, seven months ago, he's on the slide now. But it doesn't mean to say that he's not a nice kid and that he shouldn't have got the decision against the Argentinian guy. He yeah. got robbed in Germany. Against, uh, he's right. a, a good, honest pro. But I think Martin now is probably... British level, if he's lucky now, but it's no disrespect to him or anything like that. I think it's an easy one for Billy. But what if Martin performs out in his skin and Billy's not took it serious and Billy's been inactive, it could spring up a surprise. But I think it'll go 12 rounds and it'll be a point to him for Billy. What, what do you think, Chris? Yeah, um, right. I would uh, pretty much go along with that. Um, yeah, um, God, right. I think he's only had, I think this will be his third fighting. Um, two years, so you know what I mean. Like he's basically he's basically coming off the couch, and it's so. But yeah. Uh, yeah, being a fan of his, yeah, right. I uh, definitely want him to win. Like the odds of him doing it, you know what I mean, are very very slim. You know what I mean. But he has been so lucky previous in world title fights that I think he's actually due a bit of luck by a actually getting the fight, and then hopefully b if he does the business, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, so yes. I wish Martin Murray well, and uh, I wish Billy well. May the best man win, but. I think Billy will just practice his art on the night like he always does and just mess him about and that take it to 12 rounds, not get involved. And yeah. you know, what I mean? that's what I think will happen. But good luck to Martin for taking it. But my argument with it is, and it's very, it's very hard not to be negative, but there's that many things that I see that's not right, not right with sport. My, how's Martin Murray get that ranking? Do you know the WBO ranking? How does he get that ranking out of nowhere? You can't get a top 15 ranking like that. That's craziness. Yeah. yeah. He's not done anything it... to get that ranking, has he? He's just come out of nowhere, being inactive, and all of a sudden he's in ranked in top 15, which means it can be a voluntary defence for Billy. That's wrong. That's what's wrong with sport. True. That's what I think. I think, anyway, I just... Do you know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. He's uh, definitely been slipped in there, and you know what I mean. They probably, yeah, they've probably known about it for a while, and then they slipped him in a few months ago, and then they've only recently announced the fight. But I just think Martin Murray's been that bleeding unlucky in boxing. I think if he fell into a swimming pool full of world titles, he'd come out with an IBO Intercontinental belt round his waist. You know what I mean? So I think he's due a bit of luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. 
Yeah, but like I said, I wish Martin Muddy well. He's a good bloke. He's got a good name in boxing. He's one of yeah. the You know, he always strikes me as being well-spoken. And, you know, and he's done a bit of shovel as well, and he's done a bit of jail. Yeah, he has, yeah. yeah. He, he was a bit of a naughty boy years ago. <laughs> yeah, he was a bit of a naughty boy. Sorry, Porky, for speaking yeah, on me Yeah, what, mate? No, go on, you were saying you were saying you were a naughty boy, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know what I mean? He's like a uh, like story where he's turned his life around, done well, you know what I mean? And he's made a million quid, so good luck to him. He works in community as well now, doesn't he, Martin? Yeah, 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 right. He, he does all kinds. He owns businesses and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But he's well-liked in St. Helens. In fact, he's loved. And if he did win the fight against Sons, then he'd get his big fight then at um, Langtree Park, and I think he'd probably sell it out. Yeah, and, and what people need to understand is upsets happen in boxing. If Martin Murray is really up for this and he can just perform for one night of his life out of all them bad times that he's had with bad decisions and bad injuries and people pulling out, he's just got that one more chance that he could and really go for it. But he's up against the kid that's at the top of his game. But is Billy at the top of his game? You know, he's been inactive and he doesn't always live the life, does he? So it remains to be seen, but he's a fighting man. He can fight and he's got all, he can fight every style, do everything. Yeah. So it's an hard one, but I personally think that he loses on points, but it'd be better for him to fight Billy at super middle than Miller middle because Billy loses his advantages, doesn't he, at super middle? Yeah. So he could yeah. take something from that going into the fight, but I think it's probably a points win for Billy. Uh, for Billy, yeah. for Billy, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, yeah, right. I probably would agree with you, but yeah, um, I hope that Martin Murray does the business and chins him. Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else you want to talk about, Chris? Yeah, um, next one. Um, Dubois versus Joyce. Now that Fury's been took out of the equation, yeah. um, do you think Frank Warren's going to, you know what I mean, set it back until the fifth and then try and slip it in on pay-per-view with an undercard? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I was speaking about this with somebody today and I said that he might pull the show because I think they were only putting that as a non-pay-per-view because they had the Fury money coming on the December the 5th, you know, a week after. And I was starting to wonder if, because there's no crowd and that, they can move dates about, can't they? And that and it doesn't upset anybody. So we might just see it move back a week or stay as it is and put a couple of guys on, on an undercard. But it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what goes on with with them at the moment because we know Fury money coming in this week and not for the foreseeable future because he's locked locked in a legal battle with Al Heyman and Bob Arum and it's going to be interesting to see how it affects the rest of Frank's fighters. But I bet he's doing the old shoulder roll. Oh, oh, Jesus, he'd be spinning, he'd be like that. His bleeding middle finger would be swatting flies all over the yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old dinted. <laughs> brick top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, brick top. Yeah, um, moving on then. Um, the next one, just been announced. A uh, bit of a shocker to me anyway, because I'm not that clued in. Um, Smith versus Canelo. Yeah, surprised <laughs> everybody, didn't it? Yeah. I think that it's a good fight. Smith's undefeated. The other kid's only lost to Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I think it's a really, really good fight. And you've got to take your hat off to them all that's involved in getting the fight. They've obviously yeah, had yeah, yeah. money. It, I never thought it'd happen this year. But what I do think is that you're putting up, sorry, you're putting a guy like Callum Smith in. Who's his best win? Yeah. It's Groves, isn't it? Yeah, it's Groves. Groves. It's got to be Groves. But nobody's saying Callum can't uh, fight. I spoke to Carl Frotch about him and he says he can fight. He said he's really, really good. Really good. And yeah. he, he said to me years ago, he said he'll walk away and he did. But I just think that he's breezed through the people that he's fought. Do you think because the division got weaker? We don't it seem to have seen him in a fight and, until the rider won. Yeah. That's the only fight that we've really seen Callum Smith in trouble in. And he didn't look like he liked it, but he hung in there. So that showed heart. And he'll take something from that. But I think he's up against it. It's going to be away from home. I mean, Canelo could take a punch, can't he? Oh, yeah, Jesus, right. I'd like to like say that Canelo's probably got the best chin in boxing, Porky. Yeah, Golovkin hit him with everything. Biggest ever middle middleweight puncher. He then skipped super middle. No, he beat Fielding, didn't he? But he went to light heavy. 
And the biggest puncher in light heavy in recent years, Kovalev, fruit kitchen sink at him. Fruit kitchen yeah. sink at him. And he couldn't budge him. So he could take a punch. Callum at 168, yeah, I don't think he'll be able to budge him. So if it goes to points, you're not going to get the nod. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. but I think it's an hard fight for him. But I hope he wins because if he wins, it means that we've got a pound for pound great, don't we? Or a top five pound for pound great. He then gets a rematch with Canelo. And he gets another massive payday and he's set up for life. So it's like a two for one if he wins. He yeah. could outperform him on night and keep him at range and really turn up for it. So it's going to be interesting. But I do think, though, and Canelo's not a southpaw, is he? But no. I do think that Callum Smith struggled with John Ryder because he's a southpaw. That's what I'd think. You? Possibly Porky, possibly. You know what I mean? You know what they say about uh, right, southpaws? They sort of drowned them all at birth. Yeah, yeah. right. It's basically everything's mirror image in it, you know what I mean? A self yeah. is always uh, like accustomed to fighting a like like a right-handed fighter, but it doesn't know. work the other way. Yeah, but mate. An orthodox fighter, you know a southpaw, right? It's is it two in under the southpaw, so they can't get sparring in, so everything's off skew, isn't it? Everything's from one yeah. side to other. But yeah. if you wind, if you go back on John Ryder's career, go back on his career, do you remember when he fought Billy Joe Saunders? Yeah, great that fight. Billy Joe Saunders is the hardest fight. Do you know why that fight was hard for Billy? Southpaw again. Southpaw against the Southpaw. Because Billy's yeah. a Southpaw and he's used to fighting orthodox fighters. And jo- and John John Ryder were the same. So this the styles sort of clashed, didn't they? We had the same, hadn't you? Styles make fights. So they were both style, both Southpaws and it sort of clashed. And I thought maybe Billy just shaded that fight. But I've seen him go either way on, with that kind of fight, how it went. I thought he just nicked it like he yeah. did the Eubank fight. But it's uh, it's going to be an hard fight for, for Callum Smith. But uh, I, I wish him all the best. I wish him all the best. And obviously, Canelo's biggest star in sport, isn't he? Yeah. But to get that fight. And he beat his brother as well, Canelo, didn't, Canelo, didn't he? beat Liam. So yeah. to, fight, to fight, we could get him back for his brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. Personally, right, I think like you, it's either going to go one or two ways. It's going to go either Canelo knocks him out or, you know what I mean, Canelo win, uh, yeah, wins on points. Because like you say, I don't think anyone's going to get a decision against Canelo. Some of the decisions that he's had in the past, you know what I mean, right, there's just too much money in him, in my opinion, to keep him at the top. Mm. So, yeah, so I think the only way Callum's got a chance of winning is by knocking him out. And I don't think he's got the power to budge him, like you say. So, yeah, right. But well, I hope and pray that Callum does it. Yeah, I do, man. I do. I, I hope it... Because you know what? I know Paul Smith gets a lot of stick on social media, but he fires back, doesn't he? And I think he white yeah. attacks the bait. The, the, the other two kids are not so bad, are they? And, no. And, but they, they, I think Liam just have, have, has a little go every now and then with people, but they, they all seem pretty well-grounded. Kids don't get fetched yeah. up correctly by the parents, and their parents yeah. should be proud of them. But... Uh, Callum, he seems really quiet. You don't really get much from him, do you, in interviews? No. He's just very, very quiet. He reminds me of Yui, you know. Very yeah. shy and don't really speak unless he's spoken to and just stays quiet. And I'm just wondering if there's something inside him that's he's got that really, really good mega confidence that he secretly thinks, yeah, I'm going to beat this kid here. Yeah. He beat everybody else he's fought, hasn't he? So yeah, I, true. And, he, and, he were, and he should have gone to Olympics, Callum Smith, you know, he were robbed. He should yeah. have gone to Olympics, he were robbed. So I'm I'm wondering if there could be a surprise. And everybody's writing him off. And because we're all saying that he needs a knockout to win because he'll not get one on points. But he could go over there, probably lose on points and do a good job on Canelo, and we could all scream robbery. Then he'll have to fight him again. So maybe that could happen, but I don't think he's out of it just yet. And like I said, he's pretty dedicated. He's got a good trainer behind him. So we'll see, won't we? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, right. What though, Porky? Do you think the fact that the fight's only four and a half weeks away, do you think that'll count against him? Or do you think he's known about this for a while and he's literally been in deep preparation, you know what I mean, without anyone knowing? Because that, because that's like my um, like biggest concern with it, the fact that he's only got four and a half weeks. Now, obviously, he's going to be fit. He's going to be training through the lockdown, but... It just seems so close. I think that uh, I think that Callum's one of them 
kids that's going to be in gym all the time. They're, they're, all, all, all them lads, right? I mean, I followed Paul Smith from when he turned pro, and he, there were loads of hype behind Paul Smith. He were going to yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he were going to be next big thing, Paul Smith, and I were yeah. one of them people nice. shouting and bawling about it because we all get carried away, don't we, at times? But I think all of them, I think they're all disciplined and they're not them type of kids that you'd need to get get them out of bed in the morning, you know, like Dave Allen and say, get out of bed and get your run done. They're the type of kids that will get up and do it. And and I think they're all driven. So I think that uh, Callum will have, he'll be all right. He'll be ready. I think he'll have been ticking over, Jim. And, you know, the the, the consummate professionals, aren't they? Yeah. You don't get to be world champions, do you? No, no, no. God, no. Cop, do you? So, no. so no. I hope it's a good fight, and I hope he does well because he yeah. always strikes me as a nice kid. He doesn't strike me as one of them that wants to be doing interviews every single day on IFL and doing <laughs> his life on social media. But like I said, he look. I think there's a quiet confidence about him that he could be one of greats. But we haven't seen it yet, have we? We've not seen him out of third gear. He just seems to have breezed through. Mm. Every, a bit like Billy Joe, they seem to have just breezed yeah. through, don't they? Yeah. And we just want to see him in a fight. And now he's in this fight. I think that's good. I know, I know people can scoff, and I might scoff sometimes in me in me moments where I think he ain't going to win, and I'll say, God, I can't see him doing it. But like I said, that's because Canelo can take a punch, so if he can't knock him out, they're not going to give him a decision in another country, are they? So, but we might knock him out, he might catch him. I don't know. He's got the power to do it, so let's hope so, eh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anything's possible, especially in boxing. It is anyway. You know what I mean. Anyone can chin anyone on any given day. Yeah, of course it is, mate. So yeah. Um, next question. Um, all this with Wilder and Fury. Like, what uh, do you think's going to happen with it? And like, you think uh, Wilder's going a bit mad? I'm not always right, but I'm a little bit quirky and a bit eccentric. This is how I. Look. <laughs> Somebody once said to me, this this boxing uh, gentleman, he said to me, he's been around game years, he said, always think the opposite when something seems too good to be true. And I sort of have that mentality. Now, I, when if you go back on my channel a few months, you'll see that I said, look, these are going to end up in court. Correct. I said it, didn't I? Because Al Eamon were a lawyer, wasn't he? Harvard grad. Yeah. Bob Arum were, is a lawyer. Right? Lawyer. But he, there's, a lot of e- there's a lot of egos surrounding boxing, I've noticed. And all the rules are all designed for everybody to fall out amongst each other. And then make mates a few months later. And this seems to happen all the time. But looking at this from the outside, I just think that they're going to park Tyson up. And people are saying, no, no, he ain't, he ain't, he's going to fight Cabriel. Well, somebody said to me tonight, oh, you were right about that. I said, well, he's been parked up nine months already, hasn't he? Nine months. And it'll be another nine months. And in that period of time, Wilder will be getting better and be getting right mentally, physically, emotionally, putting a bit of weight on or taking it off, whatever he's doing. Tyson Fury, they'll be hoping that he switches off and goes, goes off at rails a bit. That's what they'll be hoping. And they'll drag it out and drag it out for a better deal for them. And that's just how it, how it is. You couldn't imagine Liverpool telling Man United not going to play Mick Cup fan. Oh, we'll delay it a few months. <laughs> what happened, would it? No. It only happened in boxing, but I think I think you, it's going to be heading for a delay, and you're going to see a lot of ups and downs and stories spun. And Tyson will be spinning stuff, uh, putting stuff out that's not true because that's what he does, doesn't he? he puts stuff out, <laughs> off, and they'll be putting stuff out, and it'll, it'll be an up and down job. That's what it'll be. And Bob Arum will be getting older, but he seems to be around forever, doesn't he, Chris? Oh, Jesus, like a dinosaur. He's ninety. <laughs> See me off, so but yeah, so I, I just see it dragging out, Chris. What do you think? Yeah. Um, personally, right, I don't think it's gonna happen until probably I'd say about the summer of 2022. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. You could be right, mate. You could be right. That's what that's what could be happening, mate. They could be dragging it out for as long as they can, you know, legally, because they're gonna everybody's gonna blame virus, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we had to do it because of pandemic, pandemic or whatever virus thing with COVID. But uh, yeah, so that, I just think it's just going to be a bit messy. So yeah, right. Uh, moving on now, this new Bridgeweight thing that they've got going on with the WBC, right? Do you think Wilder's going to be um, hanging fire for that rather than going after the Fury fight? No, no I don't. I don't think he will because he was knocking people out one ears in every way. 
he, he, he'll be telling himself it's just a bad night at office. And really, he should have just said, you know, I had a bad night at office, I got beat, and give Fury all the respects it will. But fighters, they have people in their ear, don't they? Every, everybody's an expert, aren't they? All these experts, they're not putting shows on. They're not putting the money up. They're just experts and these people that hang around these people's teams. They should leave it to a trainer and that's it. He should ask his trainer, Mark Breland, did I get beat? Mark Breland has said, yeah, because he pulled him out, didn't he? Yeah. So he's first person to cop it, which I don't agree with. The rest of it is Wilder just not accepting it. But if you back up, 46, 46 year. George Foreman against Ali. George Foreman couldn't accept it, could he? He was no. spiked. They would put voodoo curses on him, all that. And, and he did his own editing. He, he did his own editing. And then eventually he's come to terms with it, hasn't he? Because he, he's happy now. But it might take Wilder a long time to get over something like that because he got mullered, didn't he? Oh, well, he, got, he got absolutely slippered. He got absolutely annihilated. But though, like you say about. Um, Foreman, I think Foreman said on in an interview that, that like it took him the best part of 10 years to get over it. Yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. It took him 10 years, and I think he was working in a church at the time. Then he came back in 87, didn't he? Yeah. Retired in 77, uh, and he came back in 87, yeah. But it took him a long time to get over it, yeah. yeah. Then he got over it about 84, I remember reading that. <laughs> and that's, that's what things like that do to you, because he... If, yeah. I mean, what what were he at the time? He were... He were pff, I forget how many fights there, but they were all knockouts, weren't they, that he'd had? Yeah. Everybody out with 41 and all. I mean, I haven't got the statistics in front of me. He blasted everybody out, and he? Very so, similar to Wilder, sorry. Very similar to Wilder. And, and and when they get beat like that, they're thinking, well, I'm the hardest puncher in the world. What what, what, what were going on? Because if you can't hit the target in front of you, what, what good is that right hand? It's no good, is it? No, none at all. But the for, the the Ali fight, Foreman wore it in the target, but Ali tired him out, didn't he? And toughened himself Ooh. up and let him hit his body and all that, and then he took him out. But Tyson never get never got it hardly, mm. and he, he, he was a clinical job, and he has to be given credit for that because he beat yeah. Vladimir, a ten year champion, and Wilder, a five year champion, the two best of the generation. So he has he has to be yeah. given credit. So, but I think Wilder, what he needs to do, he needs to just sit there with his trainer and apologise because the trainer got him to where they were. They've done all this together and then he discards him and I accept it. The decision's gone. So give the trainer a bit of respect and move on and then come out, do a press conference and say, you know what? I just couldn't accept it, but I do now. I got beat by the better man on the night. And I'm going to be better prepared. And I'm, I'm ready for the rematch for the third one. And then it put it all to bed instead of all this upset. Because all it's doing is pushing fans away from sport, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. All of these outbursts that he's coming out with and then him sacking that Mark Breland, which is absolutely... It's crazy. Ludicrous. Ludicrous, you know what I mean? The man saved his life and then and then he goes and blames him. Don't forget it's Mark Breland's like Olympic gold medalist, you know, from the 84 team. Yeah, yeah. Meldrick Taylor, Pernell Whitaker, Mark Breland, Tyrrell Briggs, they all Tyrrell Briggs beat Tyson in trials, didn't it? He yeah. were every, they were all heavyweight champions. Um, all should have been heavyweight champion, but he got a bronze, didn't he? He yeah. got bronze, didn't he? And but I think I think he might have got a fighter of the tournament. I'm not sure. Someone will probably <laughs> tell me about that if I were wrong. But Breland did, I think, in eighty four. I'm sure Mark Breland got um fighter of the tournament in eighty four. Well, Mark Breland might have been wrong then. I'm like, oh, Roy Jones was the one who got robbed in 88, one he, and he got yeah. a silver v were fighter at Olympics, yeah. But, yeah. but like I said, I think there might have been somebody else in that team as well. I'm not sure, but a fantastic team, and he were part of that 84, that great team. And do you know, yeah. do you know who else we're missing off that team? And you, you probably Davis. don't... Davis. Pardon? Um, it's somebody Davis. No, Howard Davis, no. Yeah. He, he was he was seventy six with Ray Leonard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The person, yeah, yeah, the yeah, person yeah. who were missing off that team were Bernard Hopkins. He got forty years, didn't he, for armed robbery? <laughs> he got four. Bernard Hopkins were, yeah. were ready for Olympic trials and they were tipped to go all the way, and uh, he got forty years. He ended up serving like, five and a half years or something in Gratford, Gratford Penitentiary, Pennsylvania. That's a yeah. true story that Hopkins were tipped to go to Olympics. So and he missed out on that. And when the Olympics were on, he was doing a 40 stretch. <laughs> in life a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Him. 
private jets and law. Yeah, so legend well, Eddie Hopkins, living legend. Living legend, mate, yeah, exactly. Uh, living legend. Well, oh, Cal's, uh, Joe Calzaghi schooled him, though. Yeah, Joe Calzaghi beat him, yeah, he did well to beat him, yeah. 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 All right. Um, all right. Um, moving on, right, obviously you've watched the Kel Brook, um, like, because I've seen a couple of your uh, podcasts since and that, but uh, what do you think happened there and where uh, do you think Kel Brook's going to go from here on in? Uh, I'd like to think that Kel Brook retires now, because he's a shell of the man that he were. Yeah. Uh, it's all right looking good on scales, isn't it, but it's what's underneath, isn't it? Larry Holmes never looked good on scales, did he, but he always did the business, didn't he? It's, yeah. it, Kelbro looked great aesthetically on the scales, but inside, mentally shot to bits. And also, as soon as he got hit, he just turned away again, didn't he? he did gone, money. I thought he'd do Padden. Right, he was gone. Sorry for the... No, you're right, you're right. Okay. Okay. Sorry to keep putting it, but yeah, right. Uh, second he tasted a bit of leather, he was gone, you know what I mean? He just, he just looked as though he didn't want to be there, and then uh, Crawford just leading annihilated him. I had personally Crawford to win in the last four rounds. I had 50 quid in it, you know what I mean? Because I thought Brook had, like, old as old for seven, eight rounds and then, you know what, right, gradually fall apart and then Crawford had come on top. But I just didn't expect, you know what I mean, to see what happened. Happen. Do you know what surprised me about it, Chris? When he turned to Southpaw, Crawford, uh, Kel Brook didn't turn to Southpaw with him. I, no. He stayed orthodox and that shocked me. And I don't, I'm not saying you were looking for a way out. I don't know, but I just, it, it shocked me. And, and when I look at the people that he had in his team, I don't think they all had his best interests in uh, The new guy don't really know him, does he? The, the trainer. No. I, I don't know. I don't, I just, if I were going to come back, if I were Kel, I don't want him to be. If he, if he, if he were going to come back, I'd scrap a lot of them. I'd get rid of all of them. I'll go back to doing what I did what, what I did with Dominic Ingle. He should really go back to Dominic Ingle and said, you know what? Yeah. I made a mistake. Can we start again? I want one more go at it, Beefy Smith. Because Eddie Hearn's already come out and said, yeah, yeah there's, there's Kel against Beefy if he wants to fight on. So Eddie's not really bothered about him. He's just thinking at money. Yeah. He's only really yeah. fight for Beefy, that, isn't it? So, yeah. I, so there might be an offer, an olive branch to Kel to fight Beefy for one last roll of the dice and I'd make Beefy Smith a massive favourite in that fight. I would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I personally, I think if he did come back, I think he'd only come back for the Khan fight, wouldn't he? You know what I mean? Not that many people are interested in it now because I think that ship's well and truly sailed. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I personally can't see him coming back to fight Liam Smith. You know what I mean? Because what if he loses, then he's just tarnishing his legacy more than it already is. You know what I mean? Yeah, but money talks, doesn't it? And if he can yeah. pick up a pay-per-view fight and clear a million quid, it's another million in the bank. And then he could go and, and he's got that a little bit more. Because fighters, they think like that, well, I've just got a six million, a four million, now a two million. If I could just get another one million, and he knows how to lose now, doesn't he? Because he's lost three times, all knockout. Yeah. Well, I'd take another knockout for, for six noughts in banks, a million quid. This is how fighters think, you see. So... I'd look at Kelbrook, Liam Smith, Eddie Earn, wheeled out, big hugs and that, coming out with, it is what it is, you fall out with your wife even, so if you can fall out with your wife, you fall out with your mates, it's just boxing, it is what it is, gain it all that, picking up more money and a pension fight and that's it, I mean, they give Crawler a pension fight, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, that's on pay-per-view, they're pushing 60 year old, aren't they? They're older than me then. <laughs> Mike Tyson and Roy Jones were born in the 60s, 1960s. Yeah. You know that? 1960s, mate. And the long same. Time ago. Eh? A long time ago. Long time ago, <laughs> they were born in the 60s when hippies were running around smoking weed and popping acid. <laughs> you know what I mean, in the 60s, they were born, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. And it's on pay per view on BT Sport. How embarrassing is that for the sport? Yeah, it's a, just a circus fight, in my opinion. They're just circus, mate. Logan Paul job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, right, uh, like your mate, Mickey Theo, with John Fiore. That's, you know what I mean? That's her on a par. Right, nothing against them, you know what I mean? At the yeah, end of the day. License, it's a isn't it? That'll be unlicensed, won't it? Well, yeah. yeah. But, though, it, but though, it'll still be on pay-per-view, though, won't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah probably if it happens, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like the Tyson Jones fight, I'll probably buy that one as well. <laughs> oh, you won't, will you, Chris? And yeah. you got a box? 
No, mate, I've not. Right, I, right, I uh, don't mind paying for him, mate. Oh, you're proper hardcore, aren't you, Chris? No, well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, then, uh, go on, then. Moving into my next one, um, you've recently done a video about it, which like I was a bit, I was a bit miffed at because a lot of these questions I had a couple of weeks ago, you know, when I was first. Oh, just what I'm thinking, Chris. I know, Phil. Um, it's basically about drugs in um, boxing, and oh, what do you think, terrible, yeah, what do you think they can do to either stop it or, you know, what I mean, manage it better than what it is now. I think everybody should have a test once a month or, or a hair sample. You know, Rio Ferdinand got failed. Uh, you know, it, it went missing when they were a drug test. They took yeah. an air sample and it goes back six months. It's a, quite expensive. I think all professional fighters, all of them from turning debut, should have one took every six months, a sample of the hair. You know, just, just pick, pluck an air, put it in a bag, send it off. I think yeah. that should happen for everybody. It should be in the medical. You should take it at your when you have your medical and then you go back every six months twice a year they could, they could come to the gym and collect it from you it's not it, and and the board should fund it that's what i think should happen and then they know what everybody's doing they mind all this urine and all this because we saw mike tyson come out saying that he'd been taking performance enhancing drugs years didn't we yeah i know no nobody's saying out about it oh it's mike isn't it he were bad he's a bad guy well is that why we're knocking everybody out because if it is that's bad for the sport so I think that they should take an air sample, a hair follicle, every six months off a fighter. And it goes back six months, the follicle, and they could tell if they've had anything, right? That's the only way around it. Not all this chasing, coming in and chasing them for, for piss tests and stuff like that. If they do that with air follicle every six months, twice a year, whether they're in camp or not, they'll know. Because if they're not in camp, they're still a registered fighter, aren't they? Yeah. Right? So they might go out partying and that I think, well, I'm, I'm not fighting, I'm going to fight, but they're not going to test me. No, they should be able to go test everybody all year round. So if you sign up for it, if you don't sign up for it, you don't get fights. It needs strong leadership at the board. And these old guys, they're, they're not strong enough, they're too set in their ways and they're going to pass it down to the next generation and they'll be set in their ways. It all wants wiping out, starting again, or... A new one setting up with new people who are going to be more stricter because people are getting punched in head, and your head's not designed to be punched in by a 30 pound mallet, is it? No, 20, 30, 50, 100 times a night, whatever it is. So that's what I think. Because, and the testing is flawed. Fury got free tests, didn't it? Free issues. Nandrolone, cocaine, and a refusal. Four, eight, 12 year. That's a 12 year ban. He got a two-year ban, didn't he? Liam Cameron, Dennis's fighter, one test, line of cocaine, four-year. He got double Furies, but he only had one test. Fury had three. So how can that be fair? And it's the same company, Varda. Well, what's all that yeah. about? U UCAD or whatever it's called. Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah. Um, my own personal um, belief on it is right either go one or two ways either legalize everything and then have 10 years of madness where you'll end up with chicks with dicks and men with bleeding heads the size of microwave ovens and then it'll all balance itself out or um, have like a three strikes and you're out rule where first strike you get a, like a two-year ban second you get a three four-year ban and then your third strike you're out regardless yeah that's good yeah. but what you always get when have we ever seen a boxer fail a drug test and that's it, it. There's only been one person has that, that that girl, is it? <clears throat> Mia St. John, were it? I'm not sure. I think Terry Terry did a thing on his the beautiful podcast about it. I think it's been one person. Well, did Larry Alabama, did he do it? Did he admit it? I think they were only two that have admitted it. Yeah. Larry were a hundred meter sprinter or two hundred meter or something. Yeah. So if they're the only two, what about all the other 250 that have failed? Why are they all saying they're innocent? Yeah. It's in yeah. your system, isn't it? You're responsible for what's in your system. So I just think... Out. Like Dylan White's B, B sample. Where's your B sample? <laughs> B sample, Dillian. Where is it? Because we don't know where it is. He's going on about Povetkin. He don't believe that Povetkin's... Uh, Failed a COVID test, so we 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 <laughs> should ask for Povetkin's B sample, and and he'll provide it if you provide yours, Dylan. All right, all right, get out of that one. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Personally, about drugs, all right. I don't think you're ever going to stop it in boxing. No, I don't, because people are going to look for an edge, aren't they, all the time? Yeah. And yeah. what's amazing um, is you can turn pro, Chris, can't you? And you don't get tested until you're fighting at championship level. So you could have 10, 15 fights before yeah. you start even getting tested. So how bad's that? What damage have you done to them kids leading up to that fight? That uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's what, yeah. That's ludicrous, that though, right? If they don't test them from day one, then what's the point in testing them, you know what I mean, after? It, it uh, doesn't make sense. I'm always suspicious of people who have padded records, you know, then we'll get to like 20-0 and 0 and they've never been in a title fight and they're knocking everybody out. I always yeah. think, God... I wonder why they're not knocking everybody out. Is it because they're not testing anybody or is it because they're fighting uh, guys below their level? So, stiffs. So, I don't know, but it is a concern. But whenever anybody dies, they come out and they say they're going to do something about it or this and that. And there's a big thing for about it for about a week. And then it just goes away, doesn't it? Yeah. So, it's, yeah. Oh, that's boxing, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, right. And uh, speaking of, right, while we're on the subject of... Uh, Drugs and that, right? What's these things with these medical exemptions? TUEs. Yeah. Therapeutic exemption uh, certificates, something like that, in it. I yeah. think it's. I think if you're getting at the one with Anthony Joshua, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Joshua obviously has got a muscular physique, hasn't it? And we've got photos from when he was 18 to 28, and he's gone from is it 15, 15 stone up to 18 stone, and he looks bigger than that. He's saying it's good genetics and that. I don't know, but there were a, a, a TUE for him for a steroid, but <clears throat> was it for an injury or something? I don't know, but it were all kept quiet, wasn't it? Yeah. So I don't agree with that. Uh, but pff, I don't know, it's just boxing, isn't it? Who's going to want to rock his boat when he's selling out 90,000 seat arenas? They're not going to want to rock his boat. If you try and get up near Anthony Joshua, EIS, it's surrounded by security all over the place. So they're going to tell him if they're coming to test him anyway, then he'll be gone, won't he? Go through another yeah. door. I don't know. I don't know if he's on anything. I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe he just might be genetically like that. Uh, when I were 16 and I were in, in a detention centre, I, I remember being in a dormitory and there were, there were lads who looked like him and Frank Bruno had never been to him in their life. And yeah. I thought one of them came in the dormitory and I thought, oh, is he? He must be a screw him. We are gym kit on because some of them used to wear prison gym kit. And I says, here, boss, uh, what, what time are we getting out for? Because she used to be able to get out to get a cup of water. And, I, and he says, what are you on about? I'm in that bed, mate. <laughs> He'd just come in that day. <laughs> and I'm like, right. He looked like a 30-year-old. But uh, So everybody's built different, differently, aren't they, genetically? So I don't know. Maybe Joshua's just built like that, a good athlete. And, and maybe, I don't know. Uh, or maybe he's cheating. But he, his physique has changed in the last 10, 12 years, so... It's going to be interesting. But like I said, if he is cheating, nobody's going to rock that little boat, are they? No. There's too many people eating off it, aren't they? Off, yeah. the plate, off the plate. Do you know what I mean? They're all eating. So I don't know. You're never going to get to the bottom of it, I don't think. It's never going to happen. And if Tyson Fury ever cheats again, not that I'm saying he has, but if he has, he's been done for it, but if he ever cheats again, who's going to want to take him on? Multi sulfly swimming in Chow Chai now, any money wise, <laughs> but they haven't got a lot of money, have they? You had so they're not going to go after him again now. He's set his marker out with them, and he yeah. they're not going to take Joshua on. They tried to take Dylan White on, and he's not in their league, and he's seen them often in Dylan White. So you can forget them ever getting done now. That's how I look at it, unless somebody comes in. And, and sorts a lot of it out and, and from top to bottom, or unless they get caught in another country where they're not really bothered and they want to make a name for the sun. I don't know, but I don't think they'll have it. I don't, if Joshua's cheating, he's never going to get caught. If he ain't cheating, good luck to the kid. Do you know what I mean? Because to be honest with you, he's half all right, isn't he, really, Joshua? To yeah. Probably call him Big Doss Femi and that, but he hasn't really put a foot wrong, has he? He's had a few little yeah. incidents, but where he's been outspoken about issues regarding race and stuff. But, you know, he, he's been good for the sport and he's changed it. So we have to tip his hats to him, even though it grinds me. Because <laughs> he's part of the stable. We have to tip his hats to him and say he's done well. So, yeah. but if, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, if he's cheating, we're not going to get to know. 
Yeah, yeah, right. And I personally wasn't digging Joshua out, you know what I mean, by saying that. I wasn't digging anyone out. Yeah. But I just remember watching like a, um, an interview by a fellow called Victor Conte. Remember Victor Conte? Remember, the yeah, 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 yeah. He was Marianne Jones's uh, advisor. He were giving us something called the clear, wasn't it? Yeah, EPO. Yeah, she, she won all Olympic gold medals in Australia 20 years ago. She went to prison, didn't she? Yeah. She went yeah, from yeah. having like 25 million in bank to nothing, didn't she? They took everything, didn't they? Yeah, well, the, that uh, Balco scandal, Shane Moser got pulled into that as well. Yeah, and you know what? You know what? Another thing, and I hope you're watching, Terry. You know, another person who were knee deep with that Victor Conte because he lived near him, Andre Ward. He was his advisor, wasn't he, as well? Really? Yeah, really. We all kept quiet, wasn't it? Andre Ward and Victor Conte. I'm not saying Andre Ward's a cheat or anything like that, but it's like if I started knocking around with local cocaine dealer, and I know them all around here, people would be <laughs> back on sniff, wouldn't they? Even though I speak yeah. to them, are you all right, mate? Yeah, I'm not bothered now. I've sorted my life out. People see me talking to them, and they go, you know, I've seen you. I bet you were having a little tweak in the car, weren't you? I said, no, I was just talking to them about boxing. So yeah. you're guilty by association. So Andre Ward having Victor Conte on his team, what's that tell you? Yeah. Bulky okay, but though, to be fair, that um, Victor Conte is right. He's still in boxing now, isn't he? You know what I mean? And he still does stuff with other people, but he's doing it legitimately. What I think yeah. he's doing is using his ex using his experience from doing it wrong to turning it round to actually doing it right. He worked for he working for government, showing them how to catch them and all that, or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, right. But if well, if you'd want anyone, you know, to tell you about nutrition and how to get the best out of your body, then you go to someone who was the best cheater. You know what I mean? Because they, yeah. you know, what I mean, they know the best ways to do it, and then yeah. possibly the best ways to do it legally as well. Well, Ward went to him because he couldn't do one six eight properly. He couldn't do it because Ward, when he fought in Olympics, were one seven eight. Because the light heavyweight in the Olympics is three pound heavier than the what in the yeah. professionals. So Ward, well, when he started his career, he started as a one sixty because he what he thought he could bulk back up. But as as he got to one sixty eight and realised he was going to be in hard fights and that he wanted to do it correctly, so he brought him on board. We're not saying Ward's cheating, but I if that were me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have brought anybody like him on board. But if he's an expert in his field, what can you do? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's like these uh, strength and conditioners that you seem to like, you know what I mean? Like he's a <laughs> right. I'm not a he's fan one of these that. people that seems to give people like a um, like a not like a full sense of esteem, but it gives them like five percent mentally. So I yeah, think that's that goes right, it? Yeah, I mean to be honest with you, strength and conditioners, right? When I went with Peter Fury for uh, the pool left fight, I brought in a guy called Bunny Johnson. He's been in my channel from Sheffield. I went and seen Peter with Dennis and we had a chat and I said, right, this is what we need to do. So I brought Robin Reed into Duke Pads and I brought strength and conditioning for you. But I didn't know anything about strength and conditioning. I just knew a kid who did it. And this kid were a lorry driver and he stopped what he were doing and he did about nine weeks with Peter, with Peter and Yui. And Yui, Yui ended up a lot stronger and blah de blah But I think then Yui's body wasn't ready for change. But now he's two stone heavier now than two years ago. He's sort of getting his man strength now. But when I was speaking to Bunny in the camp, because he was there nine weeks, and I said, well, so what have you been doing then? He said, well, just basically, you're hanging around, you're waiting about all the time. If he's not training you, he's training Savannah, but they're not training, you know, 12 hours a day, and he was living above the gym. So you're basically just hanging around all the time. And yeah. and I think Bunny, I don't think he struggled with that, but I think he thought, you know, I'm just you're just waiting about, and it's not best job in the world. What I, I tend to see these strength and conditioners and nutrition people now, they're hanging about, and what happens is, before you know where you are, they're all they're taking fighter on pads, and they're building up relationships with fighters because you're there all the time with them. Then they're coming out saying, oh, we're like family and all this, and before you know where you are, they're wrapping their hands in dressing rooms, and I've spoke to Peter Fury about this many times, and this doesn't happen with you because... People don't take liberties in Peter's camps. He's very strict. <laughs> I bet they don't. But uh, not that it happened with Yui, but I just think that they, they, they're, doing, they're doing more than the role. For example, I'm not going to see Kerry Kays. He's Yui's strength and condition nutrition guy, but they've not known him 30 years, 25, 30 years. 
he hadn't just come on the scene. And Kerry's not going to be, and, he, and, I, and I know Kerry, and he's a decent guy, but I went, I was sat on playing with him all the way to Bulgaria. But I'm not, Kerry's not the type to start dictating and saying, oh, well, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that, you need to fight it this way, you need to fight it that way, or I'll wrap pads, or I'll do pads. No, your job's to advise about what to eat and help them with weights. They'll take you to Kerry, so he's not hanging around Peter's gym, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. I just think that there's been people, look at them around, Chisora, Dylan White, there's other fighters... They seem to hang around, and they seem to be having a. They seem to be calling meetings. That they're in fighters' ear hole, and before you know where you are, tails wagging dog. If you know what I mean, that won't happen with Peter, but I see it happening in other camps. Don yeah. Charles, he, what what what's happening with Chisora? He's at his dark road, isn't he, Don Charles? Yeah. Look at who Chisora got around him, because whatever happened, it didn't work against Usyk, did it? No. It didn't work against Dylan White, did it? No, nope. knocked out. So I don't know, mate. But it is what it is. Although we with Don Charles when he got knocked out. I don't know. Either way, Dylan. Uh, either way, a trainer can do all that. It's not not having a good strength and conditioning and nutrition guys. But I always think stuff like that's for bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. Are you telling me Peter Fury and Mark Tibbs don't know about strength and conditioning and nutrition? Of course they do. So why would? Their fighters bring people in like that. It's a waste of money. And you know that old saying, don't you? Alex Ferguson has this saying. You get a rotten apple in the dressing room, feeds other rotten apples. Before you know where you are, there's a bunch of rotten apples, isn't there? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then fighters' heads get turned. And I just think it's bad for business. That's my opinion. I, I've given my opinion to people who I know in boxing. And trust me, a lot of them have took it on board. Some are like, well, we prefer this. I said, All right, then. Oh, good luck. Well, that's my opinion. I, I don't think they're needed in the sport because if a trainer yeah. can't advise you what to eat and what and, and what to do in your training, what's all that about? Froch never did weightlifting in, in training. Joe Calzaghi never. They never did weight training. So what's all this about? All this weight training and eat this and drink that and all that. It's a lot of, you know, Jack Dempsey in the 1920s, right? Did he have a nutritionist and a strength and conditioner? They were fighting 30 <laughs> rounds, weren't they? <laughs> True. Jake Lamotta didn't have one and he beat uh, Sugar Ray Robinson they didn't have strength and conditioning they were fighting every month so I just think it's people yeah. trying to project themselves into a position of importance talking spreadsheets and putting them things around people's chests with electronic think on and doing all data stuff and all that I don't think it's needed I think that over analysing a sport that's basically just two men having a fight isn't it yeah. Might be wrong, but that's just my opinion. I prefer old school, but I don't know. It is what it isn't. Yeah. Um, you personally, think? right? Personally, I think right. The more like safety blankets, aren't they? You know what I mean? When when someone thinks that they need something, then these strength and conditioners and these nutritionists they come round, they wrap their arms round them, they tell them what they want to do. They say, "Here, eat this, eat that. You'll be exactly. faster, stronger, longer. You'll be going all night." Yeah. But, tell them what they want. Tell them what they want to hear. That's yeah. it. They tell them what they want to hear, and I've never been like that. I've never been like that. I remember talking to Carl Frotch one, once before he fought Groves in the rematch, and it, and you could you were cooped up in a hotel, and he'd be texting me and he'd be saying, "Yeah, I've done everything. I didn't camp on it now." And obviously the the doubts creep in, don't they, in that week? And I said, "Look, have you done everything in your camp?" And he were like, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, what's the problem then?" He said, "Oh, well, they shouldn't be one, is, is there? Because fighters have doubts. Then they say they ain't got doubts. They're liars." Carl will have had his doubts. He fought him first time and it were a life and death, wasn't it? Yeah. Second fight, I said, you've ticked every box. And he said, I've ticked every box. He even spoke to a sports psychologist. There were no stone left unturned. He were living in a bed sit with uh, Warren, who is it? The By Warren Beister, is it? Warren Beister on top bunk, <laughs> Frotch on bottom bunk, or vice versa. I think Carl had been on bottom bunk. And he roughed it, didn't he, for a few months going on at weekends. And it paid off, didn't it? It paid off. But every fighter will have their doubts. But I don't know. It's, uh, it's the People will tell them what they want to hear just to get just to get them through the camp. And that's what yeah. trainers have to do. They have to lie, don't they? Say, yeah, you're stronger, you're faster, you're quicker. They might see them doing 200 metres in 24 seconds and tell them they're doing it in 23 and they're quicker than ever. And they'll go, wow. 
and they'll feel better about themselves. So it's, there's a bit of kidology goes into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, yeah. All right. What's the next question? Um, next question about the uh, the Sky scorecards for the uh, Usyk and Chisora. I know you've gone over it a thousand times. Yeah, go on, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, um, how you could have it so close and then, like you say, you know, I mean, the next day they totally did a U turn, didn't they? And uh, Dave Colwell had a six round swing a day later. And then I think Belly went on record saying that that he never said that Chisora won. He said he thought he might have edged it or something along those lines. It's just how. Backtrack. Backtrack because they, they want to keep the positions, don't they, at Sky? That's basically what they did. Dave Caldwell got carried away uh, in his role as work, in, in a working capacity job. He's there to do a job, but he was jumping around like a little cheerleader. And so yeah. were Bellew. They're there to be pundits. They're not there to jump up and down and try and create noise to put the judges off. But it didn't work, did it? The judges didn't fall for it. I had him winning nine rounds to two with one shared. Yeah. Oh, sec. And that's what CompuBox had it. Yeah. Derek Caldwell had it 7-5, didn't he? He's saying he didn't have it 7-5, and I just thought Derek won. Well, if Derek won, it'd have to be 7-5, wouldn't it? Because that, that's the winning score, isn't it? Or 6-5 and one shared. Well, nobody had it that. The judges didn't. Nobody else did. And when he went going around, saying, I thought Derek won like a little keyring, wasn't he? Hey, I thought Derek won. What did you? How did you have it? And they've all gone. No, he got. He got. No, and they've got. And they've gone. Oh, then he's gone. Oh, 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 ooby dooby doo. Then he's put a tweet <laughs> out and he's saying, Oh, I need to go home and watch it at home. Why would you need to go home and watch it at home? You've just been watching it six foot away from the ring, walking around a full half of the ring. Why would you need to go home and watch it? You don't need to. If you're inside, you're as good as a referee or as good as a corner man, aren't you? Yeah. So as close, he's as close as a corner man he were. So why would he need to go home? All they were doing it for was to shout in the judges' ears. They yeah. didn't call for it. And Bell, you, well, they're going to be biased, aren't they? So why have they got them there doing that job when it's their friend fighting? That's my argument. Frotch, what did he have it? 10 2, was it? 10 rounds to 2. And what yeah. did he say? Look, let, let's get with program here. Derek Chador has been beat 10 times. He's got 10 losses, so let's just not get carried away here. He's on the slide. Forget David A trying to big him up and talk him up to be this and that. He's on the slide, Derek Chador, but they were going to wheel him out, weren't they? Three weeks later for White. This is what yeah. sort of people we're dealing with. This is in front of our eyes, and they talk about safety is paramount. My fighters are like my family, and safety is paramount. Well, how can that be safe for Derek when he's got bloodshot eye, and he's just he just lost nine rounds of twelve, been peppered by a big puncher? You saw yeah. what he did to Dave Allen, didn't you? He well, yeah. him with just one little punch, and he pulled punch as well. <laughs> so, so, and Dave said he couldn't remember not for thirty minutes. So imagine what Derek had to go through. You know what's going to happen with Derek, don't you, if they keep rolling him out? He's going to go, 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 like Riddick Bow. That's what it oh. could have been a runner been. But instead of a should have been. That's what it's going to be. We're talking like Riddick Bow. Pulped. He'll end up like Eddie Earns boot, uh, Porky. He'll end up pulped if he carries on the way he's going. End up like what? Right. He'll end up like uh, Eddie Earns book, pulped. Yeah, Pulp, yeah. They've, is it a ten or a gun now? <laughs> well, I've just had a text, actually, about Eddie Earns' book. Let me read this out to you about Eddie's book. You'll, out, you'll howl at this. Right. There you go. Well, yeah, listen to this. Eddie Earns' book is number 18 on Amazon. I've got a screenshot here. And not on the Sunday Times bestseller list. He still keeps telling IFL that it's the top seller. So why lie? Why lie? And it's a tenner, not 20 quid. So it's well, 18, though, eh? Yeah, right. But though, how literally can he get away with saying that it's, oh yeah, it's the, the number one on this and number one on that. And, right, and I'm not having a pop at him. I'm just saying what's right, what's the truth, you know what I mean? The truth's the truth in it, you know what I mean? So why say that it's, you know what I mean, the number one on this, well, the that? Reason is, number one. Because they've got, what, it, what, what it is with Eddie, you see, I've studied Eddie for years and I used to actually get on with Eddie a few years ago when, it, when, we, when he had frost. 
I studied Eddie for years and what it, what, what he does. And I used to say to people, I'm telling you about him, no, 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 he's sound, he's sound. Well, they know he ain't that, don't they? But I studied him for years and, and the, he's got into a groove of selling the fights all the time, but he's brought that sellingness of the fights into his own personal life and his own personal thing, like his book. He thinks he's selling that book. He thinks it's a fight. It's now, got it here. It's number 18 today on Amazon. Go have a look. Amazon, number 18 ranked. But he said it's number one. It's big. It's number one. It's the best. It's like him, isn't it? We're big. Yeah. We're number one. I'm the best. Match room's where it's at, baby. It's about the Benjamins. He's took that into his personal life. Like, you can imagine... You can imagine him in bed with his missus, can't you? And, uh, and oh, God. I'm fantastic, aren't I, Chloe? I'm fantastic, aren't I? She's like, yeah, yeah, you are, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie, you're a horse. He's like, yeah, I know I am. <laughs> Eddie's a horse, isn't he, in bed? <laughs> but in his dark moments, he knows he isn't. But he'll convince himself he is, and, and, and he'll have them around him, G him up. We gas it. It's called gassing, isn't it? He's yeah. gassed himself up that much. <laughs> so, once he lies, he has to tell another. Because when you lie, to keep it going, you've got to tell another. You know, like, I don't like right. to dig this out all the time, but when Tyson told that about he gave his purse to charity, an homeless charity, oh. didn't he? he? I've given it to an homeless charity now. I know that I'm not going to go into but I know why he said that, right? But I'm not going to go into reason why, but I know why he said that. But it come back to bite him at arse, didn't it? So what they did, once I fell, they were pressured to ask him. He cut it down dead, didn't he? But we a bit of menace when he told him. He were curt. Nobody dare ask the question now, dare they? <laughs> Where's this seven million? Which which charity? And what did you do with it? And, and, and what? And it's a great nice thing to do. Like, oh, I don't want to talk about it now. Shut it down dead. But Eddie's not like that. He did shut that one with Dillian White when he got up and, and when he got knocked down. All that he did say, well, I oh. believed it myself. Because Eddie actually <laughs> believes it. Because when these liars like Eddie, pathological, they believe it. But uh, I don't know. He's look. Eddie's Eddie, isn't he? We're not going to change him. We're not going to change Eddie here, are we? No. He's he just got into the groove of uh, telling whoppers, massive ones. I mean, they're off at scale now, aren't they? I'm oh. big. I'm number one. It's I'm the best and all this. But he, he's brought it into into that now, and it's just lies, mate. It's not good. Well, it's like the Eddie Hills one, isn't it? The super heavyweight, 4-0, three by way of amateur from Billy Ricky. Jim McDonnell was supposed to be his trainer. Now, Jim McDonnell won't come out and say it on an interview, but people who know Jim McDonnell know that it's Jim saying, look, it's a load of bollocks. <laughs> it's a load of bollocks. If it ain't a load of bollocks, why aren't we seeing footage of this fight? Barry Earns, his dad. He's had yeah. a production company years. They'd have it on film, <laughs> wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, we, we were even past the stage of having VHS camcorders. So there's no footage of his only son and her fighting in a sport that his dad's a big promoter at. All the fame promoter. Is he, is he? I'm sure he is, or he might be. So going through all that, and his son's not on film. Not one little shred of evidence of him having them four fights, free by way of. And also, what's the other thing? What's the other thing? Where, who were the trainer? Who were the opponent? Where were it at? Who were the fans there? You can go on forever. It's like the John Fury one in some newspaper. Isn't it? Yeah, I've had 100,000 pound bare knuckle fights. Or who did you fight with, John? Oh, I couldn't tell you. But yeah, a week before, he's on Boxing Social. He's reeling off Jack Johnson's record from 1920s. But he can't remember who he fought for 100 grand. It's lies, isn't it? Because they're into that groove of like Gene fights up. They bring it into the personal life. It doesn't mean there's no, it's not bad, but they've they've they've, they've made the sense look stupid because once you said it, you can't take it back, can you? you can't no. take it back. So, and I have a problem with that, so I have to pull them up on it. They don't want to come on in and debate me, do they? Because <laughs> I'd tear, tear them apart, one of it with with statistics and information. Because you yeah. like, when you're saying things like that, yeah, I had a hundred thousand pound bare knuckle. When you're saying things like that, and then you say, oh, I forgot who it was against, though. Uh, who? I think if I fought somebody for hundred grand, I think I'd know who it was for. So I, I know yeah. everybody's name or have a fake. We in jail or at school or that. Yeah. So if it were hundred grand, I think I'd know. Would you know? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I were driving around like John Fury in a G Reds Merc, running on chip fat, chip, chip fat and oil, chip <laughs> fat oil, which he does, and he's he's come out on boxing, so he's gonna sell it. And I had to fight somebody for hundred grand. I'd know who it were. And Eddie should know who he fought. And his opponents hadn't come forward. So, yeah, I fought Eddie Earn in amateurs. He were calling his son Eddie Hills then. A great kid. They were great. The threat was great. Or he had a good job. Or, There's none of that, is there? Mm. So, they are the liars, aren't they? Pinocchios. Yeah. 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 In my opinion, Porky, they're just promoting themselves, aren't they? Promoting but they're doing themselves. It but that's what it is. The end game's getting a few quid. Eddie's selling his book. John Fury getting on whatever he wants to get on with. But, do it in another way. Don't make rubbish up like that. Don't make rubbish up. Yeah. And, and yeah. Then, and people will attack me for it in comments section. Oh, you hate Fury's that do I heck? Just to get on with John Fury. Just to get, I've met John so went to his a fight he had in the 80s. So I've, John Fury's all right if you if, if you're in his company, but you know, I, I mean I'm doing what I'm doing now, and I have to come out with stuff that's boxing related and so you know that's not right, or that ain't right. And if people don't like it, don't watch. If you want to leave awful comments and send me death threats, they're going to do me and my kids. Crack on with it. But yeah. when you look at the facts, like I've just explained it to you there, Chris, it's knackers, utter knackers. So look at the facts and think, I like John Fury, I like Tyson, but yeah, that's knackers. The the charity thing's knackers. The, the what I've just said, the bare knuckle fight's knackers. And there's loads of other knackers as well that I've pulled people yeah. up on. And Eddie Earns chat snackers all the time, but you don't have to take it personal. I'm only saying, well, that ain't right, but people take it personal. So, yeah. What were next question? No, no. Um, that's a pretty much, that's pretty much the lot, mate. Right. Pretty and like, uh, yeah, right. And like I say, right, I've got nothing against Eddie Earn. I think he's a great promoter, but um, as far as, right, the only thing that he's ever knocked out is probably a wank, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's probably, uh, Knocked one of them out a few times, and he had a few had a good few session on had a good few sessions on the chong. I mean, he yeah. had himself he used to smoke cannabis back in the day, so he'll have had some chong. Yeah, he'll have it on the cornflakes down there, don't they, Essex? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh, one last question, Porky. What this John Fury Mickey leading th uh, the whole thing? Do you think's going to happen? Uh, yeah, I think it will happen next year, next summer when crowds can come back. Uh, mix on with a few things at the moment and hopefully they're going to put a contract in front of John Fury soon on my channel and they'll send it up to his house so they can put a contract on my channel I'm going to put it in front of the camera I'm going to post it up to John's and then it's up to him then I'll even film it, me posting it record a delivery so yeah. then everybody can see so it's up to John then isn't it it's yeah. up to John then and then John will have his opportunity to back up what he said you can't just expect Mick to go up to Manchester and fight him in Ricky Atten's gym. No. At, at the drop of a hat the next day, turn up! Just promise me one thing, you'll turn up! You can't expect Mick to drop everything, go up there, right? Up there, come on. Let's have it right. If you're going to be fighting, you want to get a few quid out of the job, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Because it was John who wanted to get a few quid out of the job to start with, and it all went quiet. And it were all to do with something to it, NHS to raising some money for charity as well as them getting a few quid. Yeah. So do I have a problem with him charging a tenner? Maybe. But it, if it can sell, why not? If they can get a few quid out of the job and raise something for charity, what's the difference between other people doing unlicensed and them? But they're going to need fans there. And all these people that keep, like I just said, they're attacking me over it. Hey, I'm just a person in the middle. Yeah. John's welcome on here. I've had Mickey on. Seems a decent fella. It's a fight. At the end of the day, it's what John Fury says fighting is what he does. Am I right? But I don't see any fighting. I see a lot of talking. I don't see any fight. And all these people who keep attacking me, have they ever seen John Fury have a fight? No. All they've seen is somebody carry off on film in interviews. They've not seen him have a fight, have they? They've heard about him taking a man's eye out. Right, Ophi Sykes, but Ophi's a small man. So that ain't that wasn't a fair fight. Nobody's seen John have a proper fight where somebody's going there and who, who can fight. He Mick can fight, let me tell you so, and he's a strong bloke. Nobody's seen him have a fight, so nobody can judge. I've not seen Mick have a fight. I've seen sparring footage. I've not seen him fight, so let the best man win. I know John can fight, because Peter Fury's told me he can fight, you know. 
Yeah. I've been told Mickey can fight, so let him fight, get a few quid, get NHS somewhere, and let's move on. Because if it drags on after summer next year, it is done and dusted, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Let's, let's let him have a year at it, going back and forward. John's gone very quiet, let him fight. Travelling man, isn't he, John? We're supposed to fight, isn't he? They don't turn fights down, do they? Well, let's okay. see. Let's see. But like I said, he shot his mouth off and Mickey said, well, I'll, I'll accept your challenge. There's no come back. They're always seen then it's goalpost move. I've seen a lot of stuff regarding this fight and I'm not siding with anybody. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of stuff about it and they need to get at it because it's going to be getting boring after after next April, May, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. If we can have the crowds back, there's no reason why this camp fight can't happen. Do you know what I mean? Mickey's up for it. John's gone quiet. So I don't know. But like I said, you can't just come out on social media and do a video and say, turn up at so and so gym tomorrow and let's do it. You can't just do that. No. You can't just do that. So let's set a date and do the job properly. But when you've got a big following like John and his son have got, you can drown yeah. out anybody. And all these people that follow them, these diehards, they then set about people on social media like me. And you want to see some of the stuff he gets sent, it's disgusting. And I get a bit of it as well, but I've, I've brushed it off now. You know, people know where I am. They could come and see me if they want. Me. <laughs> there's talkers yeah. and the Smoky Bacon Walkers. <laughs> Connect. But Connect. it's a fight, Not isn't it? That's all it is, Chris. It's a fight. Yeah. Get at it. Yeah. Get a few quid out of the job and put it behind you. Have a pint after. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and yeah, make Mickey Theo as well, right? He comes across as a lovely fella. Like I don't agree with what he said about Usk's uh, I don't. movements and footwork. I think that's level thirteen weapon behaviour. And I, I lead and only thought there was only ten levels. But as a man, I think he's a sound man, sound fella. You know he's done well for himself. He's done well for himself, mate. Yeah, yeah, he's done yeah. Well for himself, and he's he's not he's not stupid. But uh, I just think they need to get at it and put it to bed now. And when yeah. crowds come back and everything's all right, it can be made in a heartbeat, that fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, personally, I hope they do get it on. But if they do, then, yeah, personally, I've got to side with, uh, with John Fury because he's got experience, hasn't he? You know what yeah, I mean? But... The experience, he's got the height, he's got the weight, he's probably got the power and the know-how. He'd be a favourite, I'd say, in the fight. Massive. The other guy... He's always kept you sending good nick. He's sparred Scott Wells, Lenny McLean, and other people like that. So, but people have probably make John a favourite. But I just tend to think there might be a few surprises on the night. But let's, well, let's let may the best man win. Correct. Right, Porky, that's it, mate. I've got no more questions. Thank here. you very much. You've been great, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, uh, mate. Welcome to come on anytime you want. We'll arrange something another time. You could come back on if you jot some stuff down. Try and do it. If you try and jot some stuff down, try and do it on the day that you're coming on. And then you'll yeah, do videos at that if I've spoke about it before, yeah. then we're not getting tongue tied, are we? Is that all right? Sam, mate, no worries. Cheers, Porky. It's been Best a pleasure, mate. Family, Chris, you take care. And you, mate. To that, pal. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, well, that were young Chris from St. Ellen's, is it? That were young Chris from uh, St. Ellen's, young lad, seemed a nice kid. Uh, knows his boxing. Uh, knows his boxing, so some good questions there. I have mean, covered some of that stuff in my previous videos, but it doesn't matter, you want to know that, worry. But uh, all right, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. Oh, and uh, don't have nightmares.